Yes, hello everyone. Um, hello, yes, I'm Daniel from Unsloth. You know, thanks so much for coming today. You know, and thanks for coming to the PyTorch conference as usual. Um, yeah, so today I'm gonna talk about maximizing luck in reinforcement learning. So if you, for those who don't know me, yes, I'm from Unsloth. Um, we help you to run and train language models locally. Um, and some of the work we do, um, yeah, so like we do upload a lot of models to Hugging Face. Um, we just got 100 million total downloads on Hugging Face. Um, we have around 86,000 models uploaded to Hugging Face who train um, using Unsoft for RL and fine tuning. And we have around 47K GitHub stars. And also, you can get this special limited time sticker if you want after the talk um, during lunchtime if you want to chat. Um, there is a, yes, there's not that many left, but if you want to get the sticker, go ahead. Um, yeah, just ask me. We also help fix like a few bugs in training and open source models. For example, we introduce a gradient accumulation bug fix, which affected our training losses. Um, we work with all the large model labs um, across the entire world. Um, and yeah, we work with Google, Meta, Mistral, um, and many other like, um, large labs to fix bugs in open source models. We collaborated recently with OpenAI um, during their dev day on the 2048 example. Um, so you can do reinforcement learning to um, essentially make GPD-OSS, open, um, OpenAI's open source model, to play 2048 very well. But yes, today I'm going to be talking about, talking about maximizing luck in RL. Um, so the main question I always have is like, why the word luck? Um, surely reinforcement learning is not luck, right? You don't just sit there and just wait and just pray to the machine, the GPU gods, to like randomly just wait for RL to work. Um, so yes, yeah, so RL is not just luck. Um, however, it's a very good phrase to use um, because it kind of is like luck. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if you have seen this plot. Um, you know, AI has been you know, exponentially progressing you know, um, on many benchmarks. And you know, the tasks for AI that it can do is getting, you know, it's like an exponential trend, right? So like, you know, GPT-5 is a very powerful model called 4.5. Um, but you know, if you, you know, instead of doing an exponential plot, you can kind of linearize it. Um, so like if you have a log scale, then most progress does look, you know, on this linear trend. Now the question is, Will this exponential progress continue going um, and you know, somehow you know, continue taking off and go to an actual exponential trend and you know, never stop? Or somehow would this stop? Um, so there's like many schools of thought. Like, you know, some people think it's a sigmoid, like it's going to flatten off. Some people think it's going to be exponential progress continuously. Um, so it depends on who you ask. Also, like, you know, you know, late last year, um, you know, OpenAI released O1, which was, the, which was actually quite a shock to the world. Um, because if you see on the left-hand side, the performance of benchmarks kind of flatlined. Um, and so like base models actually did not get better. Um, but then suddenly, when OpenAI released O1, you know, the re like, you know, there was like some sort of this reasoning jump, um, which increased performance dramatically. And via RL and reinforcement learning, um, you know, this is how they achieved it. But the question is, was this jump just luck and by chance? Um, so maybe they would have never had this jump, ever. Um, so that's kind of the question that we'll be talking about. So firstly, what is the goal of reinforcement learning? Um, so normally, I like to like use this example. It's a bit outdated already. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, reinforcement learning, at the very beginning stages of a pre-trained model, you would ask the question, what is 2 plus 2? Um, at the very beginning, when the model doesn't know anything, it will spit out gibberish, like you know, cat, dog, apple, paris. But by chance, you will get a number. right? So what is 2 plus 2? It will say 3. And so if, it sees, if you see three with the RL algorithm, you want to increase the probability of this three, because it's actually a good answer. Well, it's not a good answer. It's like better answer than the rest, right? And you want to decrease the probability of everything else that is bad. Um, and then by chance, maybe if you wait 10 million years, OK, obviously not 10 million years, but you might get four, right? The model randomly outputs four. Um, and then you want to increase this probability dramatically, because this is the correct answer. And so that's why the phrase, where I like to phrase it, is luck is all you need um, for RL. But actually, it's more like patience is all you need. So you don't, like, it's not actually you just wait there and sit for the RL algorithm to like, you know, actually learn. You just have to wait long enough, and then RL will learn. Um, and so like, for example, the reward function for the two plus, what is 2 plus 2 example will start off at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then suddenly it would increase. Um, because it sees like a three or it sees a four. Um, and then this boom you know, of increase in reward function is essentially the start of the reward, uh, the reward model and the RL algorithm actually working. Um, and then 
it's not like if it sees four and then just forgets everything. Um, and so Ara's not dumb. Okay, so like you don't just wait there and sit and then pray, oh, you know, let's wait for the four to come out. Um, it's not actually like that. So for example, Andre recently you know, talked about RL. Um, he's, he quoted, RL is terrible, and then everyone stopped that sentence, right? So mi most people are you know, misconstruing what he said. The second part is he said, but everything else is much worse. Um, so like, the main point is like, RL does not, it's not that efficient, but at least it works, right? It's better than everything else we ever have. So as a concrete example, assume this is like some sort of high dimensional distribution of all the possible outputs of the language model, right? So this could be like, yeah, like the you know, size of the vocabulary size or some sort of like infinite space, right? And at the very beginning of the pre-training phase, most of the tokens are a uniform distribution, right? So you don't know, for example, when you ask what is two plus two, the language model doesn't know it's four, and so we just assign equal probability to every single possibility in the entire world. During the inference rollout and during training, you will get bad answers. And so the trick of RL is once you see a bad answer, you should decrease the probability of all the bad answers, right? So like for example, this uniform distribution will change because you decrease the probability of the bad ones and then you increase the probability. So you like reassign the probabilities back to the good answers. But for now, there is no good answers, right? So like we have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, right? The entire distribution is like shifting, right? All of the bad answers are gonna be decreasing probability. All of the you know, possible other answers will increase in probability. And then just by chance, you know, just by chance and patience, you will get a good answer. Um, and so once the good answer comes, your, your entire distribution will change. And so the correct answer, which is four, will increase dramatically in probability. And just to note that this probability distribution, um, you know, it's, okay, I, obviously the graph is not, <laughs> my diagram is not very good. It's like some sort of high dimensional distribution. So now the question is, how do we actually maximize this luck process, and how do we like not just wait there for the GPU and just like you know waiting ten years for this? Um, and so there is only like mainly three things: um, you know, better algorithms, better reward functions, and yes, please be patient. So in terms of algorithms, um, for example, GRPO is an algorithm that was popularized by DeepSeek, and they introduced this with reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. Um, and the whole goal of this algorithm is you essentially make PPO, which was you know, OpenAI's most favorite algorithm, much more efficient. We delete components of the model, and then this essentially saves a lot of memory usage and makes the process faster. You know, recently, um, you know, most large model labs, they want to go for like, you know, extra things. Uh, for example, most people are trying to go for LLM as a judge, where essentially you can use this to judge the output of the model. Um, and you know, there's regular expression checking, format checking, and you can also execute code and check if the code was good or correct. For example, in the GPDOSS case, um, if you want to play the 2048 game to make a good reward function, um, if the model plays the 2048 game and it never gets 2048, um, you should penalize this. If the game is played and then you get like 1024, not 2048, you should like, you know, somehow reward it a little bit. Um, and if it actually gets 2048, then you should maximize the reward dramatically. If the Python code to generate you know, the game doesn't even execute, okay, definitely minus reward on that. Other examples, like you know, for example, if you want to do you know, some sort of stock trading thing, then the reward function for this will be you know, if you want to increase profit, that's good. If you have some sort of loss, then decrease your reward function. Um, you know, the 2048 game, again, if you get an infinite loop, that is definitely not good, and stuff like this. Um, and yeah, for the maths case, um, you know, if you get the correct answer to like, a maths equation, that's good. Um, if you get an inc incorrect answer, that's bad. And so there's like many ways you can design reward functions to essentially help your RL process. Um, you know, most large model labs um, would like maybe just assign one reward function. Like, you know, has the game, has the game been successfully played, right? Just zero or one, some binary reward. But if you want to, but then this problem is you will have to wait for a very long time for the RL algorithm to actually learn. And so you need to help it a little bit by like, you know, adding more reward functions. Yes, okay. Um, so the goal of large labs is they don't just want to do like, you know, these basic games and stuff. They want to scale this, you know, RL process to every single industry, every single task, every single game of the entire world. Um, and so like their goal is to make 10 trillion environments, um, automate the entire process. Like you can essentially call a language model to generate your reward functions, to generate your environments, and to generate everything. And in their view is you can reach AGI like this. Um, so like their goal is like, you know, predicting the weather, um, you know, doing computer science, everything. And then they think, you know, by assigning good reward functions um, and uh, through the 
so essentially, if you have more than zero probability of getting a good answer, so if it's 0 0.000001 of getting a good answer, in theory, if you just wait long enough, you will get to, um, you will solve that task. Another way to think about it is they want to like utilize this methodology to do um, automate AI research, and that is what is called the intelligence explosion. Essentially, once you automate AI research, um, you know, the capabilities of the models can continuously improve over time. So essentially, the large language model will essentially learn how to optimize itself. Um, and it is maybe possible. Um, you know, I, I'm assuming we just have to wait for them to train a model and see what will happen. The other way to think about it for RL um, to maximize luck is faster inference is you, do, you can wait less. Um, so there is a tr in the training process of RL, you need to firstly do inference to firstly call the model to generate your answers. And then you, know, then you can get the good answers and the bad answers. And then you go back to do training. And then you do inference. And then you do training. And so on. If I do this loop. So currently, inference maybe accounts for maybe 20% of all the time of RL training. But in, in the future, it will increase to 99.99999%. Right? So like training will actually decrease over time. Because you want to like call the model many, many times. Right? Assume you have 10 trillion tasks. You'll be calling the model many, many times. And so the goal is you want to increase the inference speed in order to get faster RL. And so for example, like, you know, for GPDOSS, um, we worked hard to like, make inference faster for reinforcement learning. Um, and so like, training is very good. You need to increase the efficiency, but you also need to increase the speed of inference. Another one is, for example, another trick that you can do is float eight. Um, so we collaborated with the Torch AO team on this from PyTorch. So essentially, you can make training faster and inference rollout faster and decrease memory usage. Another quote that Andre likes to say is, um, you know, um, from the podcast is sucking um, RL is kind of like su sucking supervision bits through a straw. Um, we also have a sticker for that if you want. Um, so what does this actually mean? Um, and so, like, for example, let's say you ask the language model, what is the integral of some function? Right? So you just ask that to the langu language model. Over time, it will learn, OK, the answer is g of x, like some sort of function. Right? So like, it will find the correct answer. Um, but then during the reasoning process, it will say something, right? Like by using or I can see or something, right? Some sort of reasoning process. The biggest issue is in large model labs or like during our training process, you will only reward the final, um, the final token or the final like phrase, g of x, right? You will ignore everything in between because it's very hard to calculate, you know, is by using a good, like a good part of the reasoning process is, you know, I can see, is this good or bad? Um, and so normally what people like to do is you can use LLM as a judge, so you call another language model to judge your output of the reasoning process. For example, your, another LLM will say, okay, by using, is this good or is this bad, right? Reward that, um, reward the next step and so on. Um, and so this is called process supervision. You could, in theory, you know, get all the humans in the entire world, you know, everyone in this room, and label this data, right? Say like this line is good, this line is bad, this line is good, and so on, so on. But obviously, that's not a good idea, right? So like, you should not be doing this for RL. Um, and so that's why the large model lab's view is you can like, automate all of this by calling a language model to, like, you know, do, ex um, to do the labeling process. And that is also why, like Andre said, you know, it's like sucking supervision bits through a straw. Because you only, once you do inference rollout, you only reward the final bit or the final answer. Um, and so like, you're kind of wasting all of this compute, kind of. Another good paper to read for making RL much more efficient, um, you know, Meta released this paper recently, um, The Art of Scaling RLs, or you know, Scaling RLs. And you know, this, the paper is actually extremely powerful. Um, it shows that you can like, just change a few algorithms. Um, for example, like GS, um, GSPO does very well. There are other algorithms, um, CISPO does very well. And you can like, compare, just by changing some algorithms, you can increase the probability of seeing good answers. Um, and you know, make the RL training process much faster. Um, you know, for example, another trick is you can like do float 32 for the LM head, and it somehow increases accuracy as well. Um, so you know, there's like many tricks you can do as well to make the process much better. Uh, another one, very interesting, is like during RL, um, long context kind of wins. Uh, so on the left hand side, um, you can see there's like you know the blue line is like you know um, shorter context lengths, um, and you can see at the very beginning of training it does win versus like a long context RL process. Um, however, over time, once you wait longer, the longer context RL training run actually defeats the shorter context training run. Um, and so like, you know, like short, sometimes in short-term scenarios when you do training for RL, you can't actually see which one is good or bad. You know, which parameter is good, is long context better, is short context better. Um, so like you, oh, unfortunately, you do need to wait as well for this process to come out. 
So for example, for ultra long context training, you also need to make the uh, process much more efficient. So you're not, for example, Gemini's one million context length. The goal of training is to make the context window of all models, like, you know, nearly infinity, right? So deep seek re uh, released sparse attention. Um, and so like the goal is to make the process much more efficient. Um, and so like, you know, there are many ways to make this more efficient um, by, you know, offloading the gradients to um, CPU memory or something like that. Another one that the scale RL paper showed is, you know, large batches win as well. Um, so if you see on the left-hand side, if you do small batches at the very beginning, small batches seem to win in RL, right, at the very beginning of training. But then over time, the large batch scenario takes over and wins over the small RL case. Um, so like, for example, the green line surpasses small batches in terms of, train, um, in terms of accuracy. And so like another way is you need to also reduce memory usage and make it more efficient. Um, so like if you don't, if you want to run all these experiments, you need to make RL efficient and you, so you can run all these experiments all in parallel. And you know, also, in order for training to be very effective, you also need to select the correct parameters. For example, um, Thinking Machines released a recent a blog post on LoRa without regret. They showed that if you select the correct parameters for LoRa and RL, you can also reach the same accuracy as full training. Um, and so like, you know, there are many parameters you have to set in RL to make the process much better. Um, so yeah, thanks for them for collaborating with us on this as well. And yes, finally, the biggest topic actually that large labs are always have, you know, everyone's have sleep, sleepless nights on this is whether reward hacking will take over. Um, so during the reward, um, during RL, we don't actually know if the process is actually good or bad um, because we only know the final answer, right? We're going to only reward the number four as the final output, right? There is no process supervision. But we don't actually know if the model is generating gibberish. For example, if you ask the model what is two plus two, it might be doing some gibberish things and then finally it says the answer is four. But this is actually correct, right? According to the reward function that you created, this is a good output. Um, and so the goal is maybe the language model, if you do large RL training runs, over time it will become gibberish. Um, and so like, this is actually very problematic, right? If you scale RL to some gigantic, um, you know, use many, many GPUs, um, over time, maybe this might happen. Um, and so like, you know, the most large model labs are praying this is not gonna happen. Um, and so like, you know, the, the question is whether this will happen or not. Um, and so, you know, that is still an open question. We also recently collaborated the open environment, um, you know, from PyTorch, uh, OpenEnv, you know, we, um, you have 2,000 environments recently, and so like, if you wanna try out, you know, the best parameters for RL, um, and you know, how to do like, you know, RL, um, we have this new notebook with them, which we released um, today. Um, this is to play the 2048 game. And yeah, so like, finally, like, luck is not all you need for RL, it's more like patience is all you need, plus some, special algorithm tricks and stuff like that. And yes, RL is not dumb, right? So like essentially RL does learn to decrease the probability of bad answers and increase the probability of good answers. I um, mean, so like, yeah, it's not, it's not like, you know, just a waiting game to find, you know, the reward. And yeah, definitely check out our, you know, Hugging Face page for all the latest models. We fix bugs in all of them. Um, and yes, check out GitHub package. And yes, thank you so much for coming. And yes, I have a whole sticker collection if you want, um, yes. And if you have questions, you can ask during lunch. Um, yes, okay, thanks. <laughs>